Hello, I'm Steve. Welcome to the Patio Heat Channel, where we create visual concepts of infrared heating as well as tips for outdoor comfort. Our one-on-one -on -one customer support helps you make the best decision for your application. We strive to earn your business. Visit our patioheat.com website for sales and more information. Now let's get heating. All right, so this is a viewer's uh, question they had in reference to 6,000 watt units. And uh, so basically, let's just look at the uh, dimensions they have here. So uh, overall dimensions that I have, I have a 25 foot by uh, 12 foot depth. And I have a height here of um, just an estimated uh, seven six to the lower part of these uh, joists and then eight foot to the top point of those joists there. So this is a six inch joist here. Um, that could be eight inches. If it's eight inches, there's might be something else we could do. However, um, that is just what I visually see in the image I was provided. So um, let's go ahead and take that off. The question was asked um, in reference to placing heaters on an outer edge versus overhead. And um, in specific, they were speaking of how Infratech uh, mentions that they prefer heaters on the um, uh, exposed side of a patio from uh, the outside edge lean or pointed towards the center at an angle of about 30 degrees and um, they state that also that the heaters will overheat you if they're above and only if they were I think it says 11 feet off the ground will they become you know become comfortable so um, that was his concern, and um, I understand that concern. And in this particular application, that would be a um, definite uh, uh, issue with regards to the height that I have here. So if that height is actually accurate, especially this seven foot five, um, if that's accurate, then um, excuse me, seven foot six inches, then yes, that is concern. So um, let's go ahead and look at uh, the different possibilities and then kind of talk about that a little bit here. Um, also, I'm just going to go into, you know, something about Infratech in their owner's manual. Uh, let's see if I go back up here. And that is um, clearances. So, you know, they talk about how the clearances are to be met with a uh, C series. I believe that's what they're talking about. Uh, this particular uh, viewer, they have purchased some C series and they want to um, either mount it on a wall or a ceiling. And um, so in any case, that was one thing. It talks about the clearances above the heater itself and then the minimum clearances on the sides when the heater is pointed straight down to the ground. When on a wall, it talks about, um, you know, this positions selected must meet all clearances from combustibles. Refer to page two. If we go up to page two here, I have highlighted the um, side. It says for wall mounting, do not install heater closer than 18 inches from adjacent walls and 12 inches from the ceiling. So that's the one issue I have with refer reference to uh, mounting it on a side wall or in this case, it would be something uh, vertical surface. So um, let's go ahead and look at though what that would look like on the perimeter or um, surface. So that is what 12 inches would look like um, from the ceiling area. And as you can see, that would be an issue with regards to obviously where would you place those. So um, basically what I've done here is just taken the two units and um, from center to center, I have uh, positioned them 10 feet center to center and also um, uh, centered within the span. So that would be from the center here, five feet to the center of the heater. Um, so that would be how that would look. And if we turned on the ray, then you can see that the footprint of heat. Now, this is the hotter point of the, uh, the heater. And Maybe I should just show you um, one other thing here. I'm gonna bring in just a um, table here, just so we can kind of take a look at what that might look like and understand it a little bit uh, better. So here's a dining table. I'm just gonna pull it in here and place it within the span here. And we'll just kind of move it around here haphazardly and we'll kind of position it 
something like that. So if you were the person sitting right here, obviously you are closer to the heater itself. And so you will be much hotter than um, you know anyone else in this patio. And if you were the person sitting over here, you can see that you know your upper body isn't really being penetrated by the, the ray of light. So this is infrared light waves that are invisible to the human eye. I just have this orange glow here only so you can see a reference of the kind of the footprint of heat that you can expect. But, um, you know, the lower body here is the only thing that's truly possible of even getting hit. Now, the table is blocking that. So if you're sitting over here, your lower portion of your body is not being he heated and your upper portion is not being heated because any um, uh, object mass will absorb that infrared heat. That's how your body stays warm as well. So here you will be in that heat, here you will not be in that heat. So that's one thing I um, always look at now. If you were able to take the heaters and place them on this wall as well, then obviously you're going to receive heat on both sides and that would be you know terrific. But um, that wouldn't be uh, uh, practical here I don't think and I try not to over um, spend someone's budget just so I can make sure I got extra heaters sold. So what my recommendation truly is, and let's go over here and just turn off these for a moment. Um, my recommendation is to place the heaters more overhead. Now um, here, I believe I have them a little bit closer. Let's see if I can pull up this measurement. It might be still around the nine foot level or even closer, but um, I did that only because of the fact that, yeah, we have eight foot um, center to center now. But you can see that we're missing here, we're missing here. But uniformal heat is um, found over here. Now we might have to move the table, obviously, over, uh, you know, more centrally located. But this is be a, would be, a, to, in my opinion, a much better uh, application. Now we can also, you know, move the table all the way over. Uh, let's go this distance here so that you know, maybe it's more centrally located in here. Maybe we move these heaters, you know, one foot um, in closer here to each other. And so we get a more even flow of heat. And now we're at six feet center to center, but we're getting a more even flow of heat. Now, last thing I should mention is, you know, they did talk about the height. And yes, I probably would not select a 6,000 watt unit for a mounting height such as this, because you can see that it's really designed for a much higher application. So, you know, if I was just to take these um, units and move them up to what their desired application height would be, that's another three and a half, three feet two inches that I'm going up higher in order to um, put, place them in the, the most ideal uh, installation height. Let's go ahead and remove that. And then also, you know, what I would state though, is if you have these units and you wanted to control them, you could control them using a duplex switch um, on each unit. So one element on, one element off, or both elements on, on a cold day, or you could um, use a control panel. So that's something else to think about. Uh, lastly, I'm just gonna talk about uh, this clearance up here or this, uh, the spacing that I have up here. So if we were to take this six inches, you know, what, what I really need is eight inches. So if this is an eight inch surface or you could drop the ceiling down another two inches, that would also work. But you could place a, um, a flush mount unit and I'm just gonna just plop one right here. In that distance now, I have these beams at, excuse me, let's see if we can get in there. Um, I have these uh, beams here going across at uh, 16 inch centers and that will accommodate the heater itself and the flush mount kit and um, I just want to verify that so yes 16 inch centers that'll accommodate the heater there's enough space to you know build a box around it and it will also bring the heater up six additional inches which is kind of nice but you can see with a six inch um, distance I really need eight and that would make this um, uh, a better uh, visual application so um, but it, what it also does is it brings the heater up so I made a little model over here it brings the heater up off the ground um, so this is six inch higher and I just placed both units um, 
you know, end to end as well as, you know, front to back. And um, you can see that my footprint of heat is a little bit wider. And that's what happens as you, you know, as you install the unit higher and higher, then the footprint gets larger and larger and most ideal for um, the seating position. Um, you can see here, you know, the higher unit has a 54 square foot area and then the lower unit has a 65 uh, square foot area. So that's another benefit is moving that heater up in order to get a little bit wider of a footprint of heat. But just so you can see, that is another way to make the unit um, a little bit nicer. I don't think that's, you know, worth the extra cost of the flush mount kit. However, it is something that looks better and um, it does give you a, a small amount of increase in the footprint. The main issue here is really just the fact that the heaters are probably overpowered no matter where you place them, either centrally located and or on the perimeter of this area. So. All right, well, I hope this has helped. If you're looking for some assistance with your outdoor heating application and you would like us to review your plans, please send your information into designs at patioheat.com. I'm Steve, and please hit that like button. We don't advertise, we're not monetized. YouTube does not promote our channel, and viewers like you do not find us unless we get that thumbs up. So we truly appreciate that. Thank you. Have an excellent day.